is the UK MT Intermediate Maths Challenge 2022. Let's just get straight into it then. Question number one. Uh, so we obviously know that 60 minutes is one hour. Um, so if we divide this by 10, we get six minutes. Divide this by 10, but of course we know that this is 0 0.1. And so we get the answer of 0 0.1. Good. Question number two. So, I mean, there's a recipe for apple crumble topping. It's all of this. Um, they're thinking about total topping. So let's just add these things together to get 200. Um, and then doing two and a half, so two and a half times 200, or two times 200 is 400, half of it is 100, add it on, get 500. That's none of the options, but we just need to remember this transfers to 0 0.5 kilograms, not 5 kilograms or whatever. Good, because so, there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. Uh, question number three, so 3 million eggs in 20,000 nests. So we're going to have to divide 3 million by 20,000. Now you could use a bus stop. I just stack them on top and then I can cancel all of those zeros with all of these zeros and I get 300 over 2, which is 150. Question number four, another division here. We've got two kilometers, which is 2,000 meters of tunnel. I'm doing five meters a day. So let's do 2,000 divided by five. Uh, use a bus stop if you want to. That goes to that zero times, carry the two, four times, and then zero and zero. Um, 400 days is just over a year, um, I believe. Question number five. So this is one of those classic questions where they don't want you to actually work out what this is. Like you can, and then you can work out what these are and you can find the one that matches. But what they want you to do is understand that what subtraction is, is working out the distance between the two numbers. Like six take away three is three because the distance between three and six is three. Or six take away minus four is 10 because the distance between six and minus four is 10. So the distance between these two numbers is what we're looking for. And now when we look at this here, well, the first number has been increased by one and the second number has been decreased by one. So the distance must have increased by two. So this can't be the same. This is definitely not the same because the numbers are so much bigger that the distance is also really much bigger. Here though, this number has been decreased by six and so is this one. So the distance between the numbers therefore is the same. Um, so therefore this must be the same uh, answer as this. Uh, even without having to actually work out what that number is. Uh, three. So first thing to do is to change that from horrific mixed number form into something much better, like an improper fraction. Um, and now 20%, usually you might do 0.2 times the thing, but of course 0.2 is one fifth. And now of course we can times and then we simplify and we should get our answer of three quarters. Uh, so seven. So this is the first question where I'll show you a couple of ways to do this. The first way is to just, so you're looking for which number you can input to give you a positive integer here. The first way is to just try inputting the numbers. So just try with three first. Um, you eventually get to a point where this clearly isn't an integer, so we stop. Then you put in 84, uh, divide by three, use a bus stop if you need to here. Take away 10, divide by three, take away 10. Now that is an integer, but it's not positive. So that doesn't work. Uh, put in 102, keep going. And of course, the, the first four aren't going to work. And because the first four don't work, because um, this isn't a positive integer, uh, the answer must be this one here. If you're going to try numbers along a line in UKMT, you might want to start at the last one because they often make it the last one on questions where you they know you're going to do that um, just to troll you. So maybe start at the last one. Um, the other way to do that, of course, is to say, well, if you're going to put some number in here, which is going to give you some number out here, which is a positive integer, but you want it to be the least thing that will do this, the smallest thing, stands to reason that this thing here will just be a one, because that's the smallest positive integer you can get out. And then you just work backwards, right? You add 10, you times by three, you add 10, you times by three, and you end up with 129, because you get 11, 33, 43, um, 129. Cool. Question eight, so 40% is four tenths, 50% is five tenths or a half of 60. Times them all together, you could have simplified these more, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, 100, 20, um, uh, it's up to you how you do this, but I just simplified that to a fifth and then that's 12. Same thing over here, um, so five tenths times six tenths. You could have written this as a half again and this is three fifths, it really doesn't matter. That's three tenths, divided by 10 is seven times, sorry, is seven times by three is 21. Difference between those things is nine. So that would be the answer. Question number nine. So yeah, we've got to think here, how do you make a fraction small? And the way to make a fraction small is to make the denominator as big as possible. So here, X is bigger than 2022. So if we just compare A and D for a moment, 
d is going to be smaller because the denominator is bigger, right? You're dividing by more stuff. So d is definitely going to be smaller than a because the denominator is bigger because x is bigger than this. But then if we look at e, the denominator is even bigger here because you add one. So this is much is is again smaller than this. And so because this one is the one with the uh, biggest denominator, it must be the one that's the smallest um, overall. Of course, the other option is you could just put in a number and and do some sort of quick maths. But I think just thinking it through the way that I did first is probably best there. Um, this is probably an inferior method, but you know, making up numbers is sometimes nice. I do that in other occasions as well. Um, question number ten. So. Uh, okay, so we've got 100 rectangles, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So notice the even ones are these ones here, so it's going to end with one that looks a bit like this, uh, not with a tall one. Each rectangle measures 3 by 1, so 3, 3, 1, 1. And we want the perimeter of the whole thing. So what I did was I worked out the perimeter of each rectangle, which of course is 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1. And now what I said is, if these weren't in a shape at all, if they were just all separate, the perimeter would be 8 times 100, right? Because there are just 100 of them. But they're not all separate. They're squished together like this. And so every time they're put together like this, we lose perimeter. So here, we lose one perimeter from this, kind of this block side, and one perimeter from this block side. And here, we lose one perimeter from this block, and another perimeter from this block. Um, so we lose all these one little ones of perimeter. And now, all of the blocks... Um, in the middle section, by which I mean all the blocks that aren't the two end pieces, they all lose this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and all the ones uh, going on. They all lose two perimeter, right? So this block here, it loses a perimeter here and a perimeter there. And this one here loses a perimeter here and here, and this one here and here, and so on. So all the 98 in the middle that aren't the two end blocks, they all lose two perimeter that aren't actually part of it. So you take away two times 98. But you also, the very end pieces, this one and we'll just say this one, just lose one perimeter. Right? So we also need to take away 2 times 1. Um, and so we do 800, take away 1, and 6, take away 2, and we get 602. There are probably other ways to think about that, but that's just the way that I did it. Um, question number 11. So I set up algebra here. So what number? So let's just call that number x, whose quarter. So a quarter of x shall be, so equals, 9 more than x itself. So a quarter x equals 9 plus x, or x plus 9. So we need to add 9 to the number, 9 more than the whole, and that makes a quarter of the number. And of course, now we can just do some algebra. Take away a quarter x from both sides, take away 9 from both sides, times by 4, uh, and divide by 3. And we got the answer of minus 12. Of course, you can put that in. You can say, well, okay, a quarter of minus 12 is minus uh, 3. Um, minus 3 is... Um, 9 more than minus 12, I believe. Um, so yeah, that must be correct. 12. So it's very tempting to do some Pythagoras here, and I sort of did, but I also sort of didn't. I would highly recommend when you go into Intermediate Math Challenge that you have this triangle somewhere buried inside your head, uh, just ready to get out whenever you need it. So the one run root two triangle that's got a right angle, one squared plus one squared, is, um, is two, so you then root it to get root two. Now, the reason this is so useful is because if we just look at this triangle and look at this one, this triangle is just two times bigger than this, right? You've taken size one and one, and now it's two and two. So without even using Pythagoras, I can just immediately write down that this side must be two root two, just twice this. Now, these three triangles are all similar. So if this one was isosceles, so is this one. So that must be two root two. And now we play the same trick again to find this side, right? So this triangle in the middle here, is scale factor 1 times 2 root 2 to make 2 root 2. So the scale factor is 2 root 2. So we need to times this one by 2 root 2 to get this length. Now, of course, you did, could do Pythagoras here, but I'm just being fancy. And um, when you multiply this, this is 2 times that. You can multiply in whatever order you want. And then this makes a 2. Root 2 times root 2 makes 2. Times 2 is 4. And so this side here is 4. Again, this is still isosceles, so this is 4. Completely unnecessarily, I worked out this side doing the same thing by just doing this is a scale factor up by 4, so this is going to be 4 root 2 over here. doesn't matter, though, because all I want is this area plus this area plus this area. So a half times 2 times 2, half times basis of height for that one. Half times 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Just be careful here, so do the same kind of trick here. So root 2 times root 2 is 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 
and then last one half times four times four, 16 times a half is eight. Add them all together. You could have also used like scale factor stuff um, across areas and lengths if you've done that. So like this triangle needs to be times by two to make this one. So this area here is four times bigger than that. If you've done that kind of scale factor, then you could have also employed that kind of tactic. How many sets of three consecutive integers are there? So the sum is the same as the product. This means the multiplying, you times them together. Now, I just sat here and came up with um, three very quickly. One minus one, one, because of course the product is zero and the sum is also zero because this cancels with this. Uh, this has a product of six and a sum of six as well. And then sneakily, this one here has a sum of minus six and a product of minus six because three negatives multiply to make a negative. So I just circled three and moved on. Because in math challenge, you often want to go with gut feeling because you haven't got that much time. It's only an hour. Um, so I just circled three and moved on. But let's just quickly prove that these are the only three just because this is a video and I can take as long as I want. Um, three consecutive integers. Let's label those as x minus one, x and x plus one. Now, when we sum those up, we're going to get three x and then the ones cancel, so three x. And when we multiply them together, I can multiply in any order. So let's just move this x out here to the front. This is a, a difference of two squares, right? x times x, x squared. The middle terms cancel, and then you get a minus 1. And then we put the x in and we get this. And we want this product here to be equal to this sum. Take away 3x from both sides, um, and we can solve this equation by factorizing out x. And then this is a nice a second difference of two squares in this question here. And we get three solutions of x is 0, x is minus 2, and x is positive 2. And notice how x refers to the middle number. Um, and so those are my three that I found just by thinking about it a little bit. 0, 2, and minus 2. And so these are the only three solutions. So that's just a quick little proof of that. You probably don't want to spend too much time doing that in the middle of a math challenge. You probably just want to move on to the next question as soon as you've got a good gut feeling for it. Especially since you don't lose marks for getting the first 15 wrong. Um, so here in a number period, each, uh, where is it, the second row are all equal. The three numbers in the second row are all equal. So if we call this one x, we must call this one x. And this one x, um, you add um, two cells together to make the one above. So this must be 2x, and so must this. And then again, do it again, this must be 4x. And then we look at some rules here, and we see easily, actually, look at d. Top number is a multiple of 4. Oh, yeah, it's 4 times the integer that you chose at the start. So the answer is going to be d. 15, lovely question, this. Really, really nice. Um, if you sketch it, you get 5, 3 is roughly over here, and then like 1 minus 1 would be roughly down here. So how do you reflect this point to become this one? Well, the line must be some kind of diagonal this way, right? Um, and now think about how reflection works. The distance from the point to the reflection line must be equal to its reflection. So this distance must be the same as this distance, which means that this point here on the reflection line, that must be the midpoint. So, okay, well, in the x direction, we go four across to get to one to five. So we need to go two across. So this, this, this x coordinate is three. And in the y, we need to go four up from minus one to three. So we go two up to get to our midpoint. So three, one. The other thing about this line connecting the points and the reflection line is they must be perpendicular. So this must be a 90 degree angle. Now that's really helpful because if we could work out the gradient of the line connecting the dots, then we could work out the gradient of the reflection because um, perpendicular lines have a rule about negative reciprocal. So the gradient of this, uh, of this line here is going to be, well, the rise is 4 from 3 to minus 1, and the run is also 4 from 1 to 5. Um, so that's going to be a, a gradient of 1. And that means the gradient of the reflection is negative 1 over this, but 1 over 1 is 1, so it's going to be negative 1. And now we have everything we need, because the equation of the mirror is going to be y equals mx plus c. Um, the gradient is minus 1, so put that in, minus 1x. And also, we know it goes through 3, 1. So when x is 3, y is 1. Um, and we put that in, and we uh, add, four, add 3 to both sides, we get c is 4. And so the equation is y equals minus x plus 4, which is this one. Uh, also notice how as soon as you even just sketch this picture down, if you go all the way back to here, as soon as you sketch these proof points down and work out that a line is something like this, um, you very easily discount this because it's got a positive gradient and this clearly has negative. This is and this are horizontal and vertical lines, so they can't be right. Uh, so it must have just been one of these two. So you get a 50-50 guess just by doing a very quick sketch, even if you weren't completely sure about how to finish it. A 50-50 guess is very good. Um, so yeah, sketching is, is very powerful here. Um, let's go on to question 16, though. Another excellent question, half of this. Um, so half can be written in a very nice way, which is 2 to the power minus 1. 
4 can be written in a good way, which is 2 to the power of 2. And then, of course, when you've got brackets and then it's using multiply. Uh, and now, of course, when we've got multiplying powers, we add. So minus 1 plus 4044 is 4043. And so this is the answer here. Uh, lots of other ways you could do that, but this is a generally getting bases down to the same base is, is a very good thing to know how to do. So that's why I did it in this way, just because it, it's a very powerful method in other questions as well. Um, okay, so this was a nice question as well. So we've got circles radius 1. And they're asking us to work out the the length of these bands here around all these circles. Now, if we look at um, this band here, it has a has a curved bit on either side and then a straight bit here. So the straight bit, I think I can work out because it's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So this must be 6 and likewise underneath. And now, if you look where I've stopped it, I... I've stopped the 6 as soon as it starts curving, but it curves for half a circle here, and then curves for half a circle here. So put these two end bits together and you just get a full circle. So you get a full circle of circumference, and the circle is radius 1, circumference is pi r square, uh, 2 pi r, sorry, and radius 1, so the circumference of this bit plus this bit is 2 pi, and so the full, um, full perimeter here is, is 12 plus 2 pi. We're going to do a very similar thing over here, so radius 1, um, for each circle, and then the distance from the straight bits here is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so that's going to be 4. So that's 1 here plus 2 across here plus another one. Uh, same thing for the other two sides, 4 and 4. And now how much of the curved surface have you got here? Well, you've got a third, I think, for each one, because you do this part of the circle, then you go straight, and then you do the next bit. So it's almost like this bit could have just been put here. And likewise down here, after you've gone straight, you can then finish off. So this is, each of these is a third of a circle, which of course means together it's an entire circle. So you just have the same thing as you had here. It's just broken into three. So each of those curved bits is still going to be 2 pi. And of course, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. And the answer is that they're the same. Um, good. Uh, question number 17, sorry, 18. Um, I imagine this, this, this question was wrote in here to distract the year nines who are taking this and completely make them lose all all concentration and focus. Um, but anyway, and if you powered through that and didn't even notice this, then you are really a true mathematician. Um, so percentage change is difference over original times 100. Now, they want the original price to be the change, the percentage profit or change. So if we call this x, and the new price is 56, we get x equals 56 minus x over x, because this is the original price as well as the percentage change, times 100. Now you can sort this out if you want, and you end up with a horrific quadratic to try and solve. So that's where I stopped here. I, I couldn't think of two numbers that did this. Um, so okay, what I did instead was I just took the answers, classic maths challenge trick, I took the answers and just started substituting them in. I was like, well, one of them has to work. Um, so this is a 20, I guess, um, times both sides by 30. No, I don't think I would have done that. I think I would have simplified that right here. Simplified that, uh, times this by 100, and then clearly this is not 36. So we discount this. Then we go on to the next one. Uh, this is 16. Um, this cancels down a bit, uh, and this looks very good, right? 400 over 10 is indeed 40, so it is this one here. Uh, and then you notice that actually this would have worked because you can use those two numbers if you were... Um, yeah, impressive if you found that. But anyway, the answer would be 40 if you got that there as well. So 40 is the answer, but using the answers themselves, really good trick in math challenge. Uh, 19 then. So an another good question I thought, we need to sort of find the angle first. We have the arc length, so that should be doable. Arc length is 2 pi r times the angle over 360. We know the arc length is 10, we know r is 6. So let's put that in. Um, and sort this out, so that makes a 12 times by 30, 360. Um, divide both sides by 12, that makes a 3, 36 divided by 12 is 3, so 300, and then still over pi. And now that looks awkward, but okay, we'll just keep it anyway. Um, the area of a sector is pi r squared angle over 360. Now we have r and we have x, so let's put those things in. When you have this over this over this, the pi kind of goes down to there. Uh, of course, 6 divided by 36. These pi's will cancel. 36 divided by 360 is um, a tenth, and then 300 over 10 is 30. Um, and we get an answer, good. Uh, question 20, a rune is asked to choose five inches, so let's put down five inches. So the mode is two more than the medium, 
Okay, so let's call the median x, and now we must therefore call the mode 2 plus x, because it's 2 more. But if these are in order, the mode must be over here, therefore, and it must also appear twice, because it's the mode. So we'll say x plus 2, x plus 2. Now the mean is 2 less than the median. So if that's the median, the mean must be x minus 2. So therefore, what is the sum of all the numbers? Well, we just pretend every number was x minus 2, and add them all up, and we get 5 lots of x minus 2, which is 5x minus 10. So that's the sum of all the numbers. And now we think, okay, how do we make the range as big as possible? Like, we've got two numbers left which don't have any restrictions on them. How do we make the range as big as possible? And at this point, it's probably best to get a numerical example. So here's one. Um, 16, 18, 19, so the mode is two more. If I choose this number to be as close as this number as possible, but obviously I can't make it 16 because then the mode gets messed up. But if I make it as close to, I need to make this one as low as possible to compensate the median. The, sorry, the mean. If I made this number clo uh, less, then I'd have to bring this number up again to compensate for the mean and then these two numbers are closer right so i want to make this number as close to this one as i can in order to make this one as small as i can so we're going to call this one x minus one and therefore um this one will be as small as possible if i just go one less than this just like here um but okay so what do i need left well i've got four x's so far and i've got plus uh three the total needs to be 5x minus 10, so I think x minus 13 marks here. Just add them up to verify. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x's, minus 13, minus 12, minus 10, sorry, minus 13, minus 14, minus 12, minus 10, so that's good. And the range from here to here, I think, is 15. If you do this, take away this, difference is 15. The x's cancel, and then distance there is 15. Okay, into the final five. Some quite difficult questions now. Um, so firstly, we think, what's the radius of the big semicircle? Well, it's 2. And where's the most useful place to put that? Well, this looks like a fairly useful place, from the middle down to the edge of the second semicircle. But of course, I can also do that over here. And now, you don't need to use this next thing we're going to use. There are other ways to do this. But if you have done circle theorems at GCSE, this itself is a circle. or It's a semicircle, but anyway, this itself is a, is, is a circle. This is the diameter. When you draw two lines out of the diameter of a circle, you get a right angle. So this must be a right angle. And therefore, this length, I don't even need to use Pythagoras because I've already seen this exact right angle triangle before today. This is going to be 2 root 2. And therefore, the radius of the white semicircle is just root 2, just half of that. And now I have everything I need, right? I can work out the area of the large one because that's just a half because it's a semicircle times pi r squared, r being 2. 2 squared is 4 times half is, is 2, so that's 2 pi. And the small semicircle, well, that's got radius root 2, so it's a half because it's a semicircle again, times root 2 squared times pi. Now, that's a 2. Of course, that cancels with the half. And so the big um, semicircle is twice the little semicircle, so the fraction is a half that's shaded. Uh, so 22, this is the first question that when I was doing this paper, I actually skipped. I spent about 10 minutes on it after having spent probably about 20 minutes on every other question, and I, I just couldn't work it out, so I, I skipped it, um, but then I came back to it, um, found a horrific way of solving it, and then someone else pointed out a much nicer way. Shout out to that person. So, yeah, we have the largest rect smaller rectangle is 28 centimeters perimeter, so this is that. So these four lines here, they add up to 28. And likewise, the smallest one, this one here, those green lines, they add up to 12. And now just, that's it, 12. And now just add, uh, just watch slowly as to, as to what I do here. And so what I'm going to ask is, what's the perimeter of the entire shape? Well, it's just four, li four green lines and four red lines. So the perimeter of this whole shape must be this plus this, which is 40. And that's the first thing that I need. So the perimeter of the whole shape is 40. Now, if I call one side x and one side y, I know that x plus y plus x plus y must be 40. So x plus y is 20. I also know that x times y is the area of the whole shape, which apparently is one of these answers and only one of them. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for two integers, that's really important, integers side lengths, looking for two integers that add to 20 and multiply to one of these things. 
and that's a bit of work, but it's not a huge amount of work. Just make a list and try and find the two integers that actually multiply to something on this list. Now, the early ones down here don't get anywhere near, so I'll, I'll skip a few, and I'll get to the ones when it starts getting interesting. Uh, this is 84. You just have to go through this. 91 is within here, but it's not on the list. Next one is 96, uh, and uh, and we can circle it. Of course, I, I didn't go any further because I knew it would stop there, but you might have also wanted to check 9 times 11 and, and so on, but you end up getting stuff um, over this. So, yeah, 96 is the answer. Quite a tough question, I thought. Really well done if you did get that um, during, during the test there. Uh, 23. So a few ways to do this, but I really wanted to use some exact trig values because they didn't come up anywhere else, so I did those. It's possible to do this without. You can just get some equilateral triangles out. But anyway, um, hexagon side length 2, so all these lengths are 2. Uh, this is a square down to here. So that length all the way down to there is 2, and likewise this one is 2 and, and 2. What I did was I split this triangle into two pieces here. And now it's probably useful to know going into the math challenge that the interior angle of a hexagon is 120, just so you don't have to waste 30 seconds working that out. But of course, if the interior angle here is 120, this angle here must be 60. And now I, I think I've got everything. I've got the hypotenuse, I've got an angle. I want this length here, and that's the opposite side to the angle. And this is a right angle, of course, so I can just use sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, so sine 60, if I call this x, sine 60 is x over 2. Now sine 60 is root 3 over 2. I just wanted to use exact values at some point. I know lots of you probably would have been trying to memorize them in prep for this. And so clearly x is just root 3. And so this length here is root 3. Now what does that make this little length here? Well, it must make it 2, all of this, take away the root 3. That must be this little length here. So that's 2 take away root 3. And now we have everything we need. The, the base of this shaded rectangle is 2, because of course it's the same as this. The height is not 2 minus root 3, because that's just this little bit. It's double 2 minus root 3. So the area of the shaded region is 2, which is the base, times 2 lots of this number here in order to get the whole height. Uh, of course, 2 times 2 is 4, and they expand out, and you get this answer here. Again, really well if you got that, because that was a tough question, I think. 24, um, so I'll show you sort of quote-unquote, uh, I guess, a proper solution to this, and then you, I'll also mention you could use trial and error, I think. Um, but, okay, so C, let's code this. So C is 2A, uh, B is 2D, and C plus 2D is A plus 2B. Okay, Paul buys one of each. So we're looking for A plus B plus C plus D, and we're looking for it to be one of these things. Now, this is just uh, some clever algebraic trickery. What my aim is to do is my aim is to express all of these as a single letter. So let's use these equations to get all of these as just a single letter. I'll choose it to be A. So now C is already given in terms of A, so I can immediately turn that into a 2A, so that's fine. What about B? Well, that takes a bit more effort. Let's first double this out. Uh, so I just doubled that, and now I can put this, I can replace this 2B here with a 4D, because they're equal. So that's a 4D now. And I can, of course, replace this C with a 2A. So I get this. And now I can swap these over. So take away 2D from both sides, take away A from both sides, and we get that. And so now I can replace, well, if I divide by 2, I can now replace this D with an A over 2. So okay, so I can replace C with a, with a 2A, D with an A over 2. What about B? Well, look at this line. A is 2D, and 2D is also equal to B. So that means A and B must also be the same. So this entire thing becomes A plus A, because B is the same as A, plus 2A from this, plus A over 2 from that, which is 4.5A. Now, A is an integer, um, and so all you have to do here is say, well, the answer is going to be a multiple of 4.5. So 4.5, 9, 13, 4, 5, 18. And so, uh, and then you can check that these also get missed. So 18 is going to be the answer. You could have also just done trial and error, right? You could have just labeled a cherry pie as one pound, uh, so therefore, an apple pie is 50p, but that can't work because they're all integers. So cherry pie, two pounds, apple pie, one pound, and then follow the logic, see what they add up to. It will be too low, so then you maybe try cherry pie at four pounds, which makes apples two pounds, and that in fact actually works. Um, so some quick trial and error would have got this question done, I think. Uh, very last question, though. So we have uh, um, tiles x across y down. So x tiles across and y tiles down, as, which of course means that the number of tiles in here is x times y. Um, and now she's going to add a border to all of these. 
Um, so it's tempting to say that the border will be x plus y plus x plus y stones if you add a stone all the way along here and down here and, and so on. But that's not quite right because if you put a stone here at the end and then here, you'll have missed one stone there. So you need to do x plus x plus y plus y plus four cornerstones. And then you have the whole border. So the border will be this plus four. Um, and that's of course 2y plus 2x plus 4 and that's got to equal the number of tiles in the original thing right the area of it so um, uh, original area so that's going to be x times y so that must equal xy so now we're going to be looking for integer solutions of course integers because it's number of tiles to this equation now there's a few ways to do this again including trial and error so if you want to just put in x is 1 see what you get for y if it's an integer then great if it's not then try x equals 2 find one for y. Now you have to keep going for a while because you need to be sure that you found them all. Um, and there's some clever logic you can use to, to, to deduce that. I'm not going to do any trial and error here. I'm going to do something a little bit interesting and kind of nice that I only noticed because I've just done so much maths in my life. Um, but if you just take away 2x and 2y from both sides, what if I was determined to factorize this? And you'll maybe see why in a second. Um, now, to make an xy, I need to have an x and a y here, right? That's the only way to make an xy. Now, how do I make minus 2x? Well, it's going to be x times minus 2, right? And a minus 2y, well, that's going to be y times minus 2. Now, this doesn't actually work because you end up with a plus 4 at the end. But that's absolutely fine if I just throw in a minus 4 over here. So it's a bit like completing the square, I guess, where you kind of just chuck in an extra thing that you need in order to balance it all out. Now, of course, I can add 4 to both sides. And this is kind of interesting because remember, all of these are integers. So we've got an integer times an integer is eight. Now there's actually only two cases in which that works. Eight is one times eight or two times four. So now all I have to do is say, well, over here, let's just say that this bracket is one and this one is eight and get a solution. X is three, Y is 10. Now just notice how I could have made this bracket the eight and this bracket the 1, because this I could have written this as 8 times 1 or, or whatever. And so there's a vice versa solution to this as well. So either x is 3 and y is 10, or y is 10, x is 3. And that just comes out of the natural symmetry in the original question, right? It didn't tell me which way to set up x and y. Um, and so x is 3, y is 10, or x is 10, y is 3, if you set the brackets up in the other way around. So there are two solutions here. But then, of course, here you have either this bracket is 2 and this one is 4, which gives you these two solutions, and again, or vice versa. So you have actually four solutions. X is 3 or X is 10 if you set it up the other way. X is 4 or X is 6 if you set it up the other way. So there'll be four solutions. And that's the entire math challenge. Um, so really, Ron, if you did that, um, it was only yesterday or the day before for most people. So um, hopefully um, this has satisfied your curiosity for the answers as quickly as possible. And, uh, and thank you for watching.